Good evening. Welcome to the January the 16th Board of Aldermen meeting. It's hereby called to order. Uh, in a moment, Alderwoman Hamilton, if you'll lead our prayer, then I'll follow up with our Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, we'll continue the meeting from there. Please stand. Please pray with me. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for this beautiful day, dear God. We thank you for uh, how our city has worked its way through the weather, through all the emergency situations. Dear God, we're thankful for the people in the right place and the right positions in each of the departments that have flowed and have worked and that make the city function. Dear God, we ask you to be with this meeting tonight. We ask you to give us the wisdom and knowledge to make the right decisions. God, our mayor, as he leads the meeting, this we ask in Christ's name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Be seated. Ms. Stewart, would you conduct roll call? Aldridge. Here. Collins. Here. Dickerson. Here. Earhart. Here. Hamilton. Here. Henderson. Here. Wallace. Here. All present, quorum established. Board, you have before you the regular minutes of our January the 2nd Board of Aldermen meeting. Uh, any questions on those minutes? Or if no questions, any motions? Motion to approve by Ms. Henderson, second by Mr. Collins. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Mayor announcements, I'm gonna suspense with some of the operational things, but I did wanna let you know that uh, our teams have been relatively busy with uh, events due to the ice storm. Obviously, Public Works has been very busy uh, maintaining the utilities and things that take place. Uh, from a dispatch standpoint, from Sunday at four o'clock in the afternoon until today at 11 a.m. Uh, from a weather-related public safety dispatches, there were 43 that took place, public safety dispatches related to weather. And during the same time frame, there were six EMS dispatches on the fire side, uh, slip and falls, uh, et cetera, cold exposure. And also from the police department side, there were six or seven welfare checks, two animal concerns, seven motor vehicle accidents, 19 motors to assist. Uh, so hasn't been as bad as it could have been, uh, but at the same time, uh, we're thankful that uh, first responders as well as public works and uh, essential staff are in place taking care of business uh, as, as they are. That's the only update I have unless you have operational questions of, of me. Special thanks to COO Andre. I know you and your team put together contingency plans last week in order to deal for the situation this week. Uh, that's been very helpful. Uh, it was a lot easier to pull the trigger and activate those things when you and your team already knew what to do and uh, that made a difference. And special thanks to everybody who spent extra hours making these things happen because I know we got a lot of people on call, a lot of people working that uh, didn't have a holiday, et cetera. So special thanks to them. Also special thanks to uh, Jason Shiflett at Domino's Pizza in Olive Branch. Uh, they fed our first responders today because uh, uh, a lot of things closed, a lot of things not av available, open for food, and I believe the total number was around 95. Is that right, Mr. Nichols? Around 95 uh, people that they fed, uh, just as their thank you for the, to the city and the workers that had to stay out in these very cold elements. So hopefully it'll be resolved uh, in the next day or so. Consent next week. Yes, sir. Next week. Next week. I like your optimism, but it'll be next week. At Tractor Supply? Yeah, to bring them in. Uh, wow, so okay. Pretty neat. Okay. Yeah. That to offer. Good. Mm -hmm. That is neat. Got a lot of great community minded companies out and about. We really do, and we're, we're thankful for them. Consent agenda, those items you've had uh, through the weekend. Any questions on the consent agenda items? Hearing no questions, any motion to? Any motions to approve them? Motion to approve. Ms. Hamilton, motion to approve. Is there a second? 
Second. Second, Mr. Dickerson. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed, motion carries. Following agenda, our planning commission, old business. There were three public hearing dates set for today. Three public hearing dates set for today that uh, included uh, three different areas. Uh, one, Vandenberg Flats proposal for 410 apartment units on Old Goodman. A uh, second was a Charles Allen uh, W.H. Porter presentation for Kirk Farm, 691 homes, and also a third presentation for IPD solutions to eradicate a 1.84 acre parcel from a planned unit development. We were in agreement board that we wanted our citizens to be able to have full input on these items and uh, being that it's, it's inclement weather and most citizens probably cannot be here or don't need to be driving. We have continued those items to February the 20th. All three need to be continued to February the 20th if there's a motion to do so with items one, two, and three uh, to continue those to 220 if, if someone would consider a motion. motion Mr. Wallace, motion to table one, two, and three until 220. Is there a second? Second. Second, Ms. Aldridge. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. New business item, consideration of an application for a preliminary plat for Olive Branch RV Park subdivision submitted by Nick Cronin, Civil Link LLC, on behalf of Amji Investment Group, LLC property owner. The request is to create a single commercial lot of 26.04 plus or minus acres the subject property is zoned PUD plan unit development and is located in the southwest corner of West Sandage Road and Ross Road. Is there a report on that property? Yes, sir. Just a few brief comments. Um, you can see on your first slide the location of the subject property. As you mentioned, it's about 26 acres in size, consists of three unplatted tax parcels, and we're about one mile to the west of 305, and we are at the southwest corner of Ross Road and Sandage Road East. And the application that you have before you is to take those three unplatted uh, parcels and to combine them into a single lot. And this is at its preliminary plat stage. And this is the property that about 13 months ago, the Board of Aldermen approved the Olive Branch RV Park on the property back on December 20th of uh, 2022. And this just shows you the zoning map and the outline of the property, and you'll see it's there in the PUD category. And then this next slide shows you the master plan that you approved 13 months ago showing the uh, common uh, parking area up in this location and then all of the uh, single spaces throughout the development. And it's actually going to be planned as a two-phase project, and when we have multiple phase plan developments, we ask that they go through both the preliminary plat and a final plat stage so upon the approval of a preliminary plat what could happen is that the city engineer could approve plans and authorize the construction of any public improvements so in this particular case our public improvements are really limited to those that are along uh, Sandage Road and also some along Ross Road um, the uh, internal um, drive drive network or driveways inside the RV park are all private roads, so that's not really the subject of it. So you can see on the recommended condition of approval number four, uh, Sandage Road improvements would include a new 12-foot uh, wide turn lane curb gutter and sidewalks along the frontage of the property and also a sidewalk along the um, Ross Road side as well. Uh, again, this is something that our planning commission looked at back on the 9th of this month and by unanimous four to zero margin recommended approval subject to these conditions. And then again, this is a preliminary plat, so you'll see this back again at the final plat stage as well. And that concludes the staff presentation. I, I did speak with Mr. Croonan today who's representing the application and advised that he offered to come and I advised that probably wouldn't be necessary in light of the fact this is a preliminary plat application. Thank you, Mr. Gambone. Does the board have any questions of Mr. Gambon, regarding the staff report. Mayor, I do have one for uh, Mr. Swims, just because I'm not an engineer and I need to know. Given the fact that there may be some RVs or heavier buses uh, in the campground, is three inches of asphalt sufficient 
long term from a weight standpoint because I know on public streets and neighborhoods we do three inches but we typically don't have that kind of heavy traffic there well it'd be something I'm gonna have to look into a little bit I know I've, I've looked into them some and um, typically I would say that that would probably be adequate for for most of them for most of the size of them um, but we'll we'll check into it and we'll, we'll make sure but it's um, um, I didn't think that RVs and my what I've seen on them have been uh, a huge weight issue typically okay being that it's going to be a private subdivision from the standpoint of their maintenance uh, it's not on us and yet going forward I wouldn't want it to be a maintenance issue that we have to stay on them about constantly or that would you know from a code standpoint so uh, but I, I mean I'll, I'll yield to that if you would just check into it it may be sufficient I was just curious based on on that aspect so okay I appreciate it thank you mr. Earhart I, any other questions of the board and we'll see the final plat for this uh, the board will see that rather uh, at a later date mr. Gambon is that right yes, sir. preliminary plat and to combine three unplatted tracks into one is what we're looking at tonight thank you any motions motion to approve. mr. Wallace motion to approve is there a second second, second mr. Collins all in favor Aye. Aye. all opposed motion carries old business items consideration of bids that were opened on January the 8th 2024 for our annual shoulder gravel replacements so these are bids for gravel uh, that needs to be put on the sides of the roadways that uh, from a safety standpoint is that right yes so we've got we'll have a number of roads that probably would fall into the category where we would want to put shoulder gravel some of our more rural type roads that we have so we did add that uh, a, a bit in there we've got three different types of gravel two uh, clay gravel um, classifications and and also CR 610 and so we may we got a bit one single bid that came back from Lehman Roberts of 167 615 uh, that was about eight percent higher than what our engineers estimate was but that was our only bid but um, I think that's a good and reasonable bid and we recommend we move forward with that Thank you, Mr. Swim. Six percent higher than previous. Uh, the recommendation is to move forward. Any questions or motions on this? Mr. Collins, motion to accept the bid. Second. Se second, Mr. Dickerson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. Motion carries. Item two: consideration of bids opened also on January the eighth, two thousand twenty-four, for Ross Church Road water main extension. The bids are before you in the packet. Uh, any, anything additional? Mr. Well, we Swift. had um, um, good interest in the um, in the bids for this project. Uh, this would be taking water from the industrial area of Ross Road over to Church Road, Church and Craft intersection. So um, our low bid was Onscore. They came in with uh, two different bids. Um, the base bid was 385, 152, 50, and the alternate bid was 398, 157. Um, we're recommending that we move forward with the alternate bid, which is the difference between the two is the type of pipe material. The C900 is, is more typical of what the city uses and for a number of reasons. We're, so, we're recommending that, um, and one of the main reasons is that the difference between the base bid and the alternate bid were very small, um, about a 3.3% increase, while the typical difference between the two was about 18%. So. We do recommend that we go with the alternate bid on score at 398-157. Thank you. Board, any questions of Mr. Swims on these bids? I make a motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve by Mr. Earhart. Second by Ms. Hamilton. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> New business item number one is discussion regarding replacement of the Sylvan Lake Weir. Sylvan Lake Weir. Yes, sir. You'll remember, um, if you, the board will recall, we've had discussions about the um, outlet um, weir structure at Sylvan Lake in April and July of this year. We had discussed it. The board had authorized um, us to hire Neil Schaefer to go and do a design uh, and to. Uh, determine I guess what the needs were it turned out that we were recommending that the weir be replaced 
Um, and so the estimated cost that we, we have that's associated with the replacement of the weir and the riprap that would be needed to tie that into our Woodland Lake Channel project, which is essentially complete, um, is about $45,000. So um, we, could, we could, if the, if the board chose, just to go and get quotes to do this work. And so we wanted to bring it back to y'all, see if you had any questions on the design. If you'll look in the packet that you have, You've got um, you've got um, a uh, you've got a picture of the the design that was um, uh, done by Neil Schaefer, and you've also got uh, a picture of an aerial view showing the Woodland Lake project um, and what it would take to tie that in. If you'll look at that the aerial, you'll see that we have a the riprap that's already in place as a part of that project, and just a short portion that would take us to the uh, rear structure. Um, to make that replacement as well. And then I've included also two photographs so y'all can see kind of why this project was needed. So the, the maintenance of this weir has become an issue um, that uh, I think is, is affecting the stability of that, that area and how that whole, whole area functions. So we wanted to uh, bring this before y'all and just see how you wanted to proceed. And if y'all wanted to proceed with, with doing this project um, to, uh, to to make this replacement. I'll be glad to answer any questions you have. Before you, you said you had some more original wells. Mm -hmm. Well, some of the, the riprap cost, I think, that we had added in there um, was done as a part of the Woodland Lake project, so I help think that did help reduce the cost somewhat. Wasn't there an, an estimate, uh, a low and high, is that right, on... With 75,000 as the high. Yeah, that's the bid threshold. It's okay. Yeah. That, okay, very advertised for bids. Gotcha. You think 45,000 is yes, the. Yes, sir. Okay. And this, what would it do, Mr. Swims? It's obviously going to prevent erosion. What, what else would it do? Well, the, um, the weir itself on the, um, I guess that would be the southern end of it, is experiencing or it's, it's eating out around the side of it. Uh, there's portions of it where the weir structure's not, it has cracks, it's not in good stable um, conditions. Uh, they had gone back and do, made a determination of what we have below ground um, and determined how far we would have to go back to actually make that. So the intent is to go back, plug the, um, the outlet, the outlet um, creek coming out of Sylvan Lake um, and remove that entire weir structure and basically we're putting back what's in place. Um, we're probably going to have um, some earthwork and so forth around it to, to stabilize that. And then a small amount of uh, um, channel work would be needed and also placing riprap to tie that into our Woodland Lake project. That's essentially the scope. Mayor, I might comment on that too. Uh, as, as we all know, this flood basin and drainage basin called Maywood is, is doesn't go away because of the flow from Shelby County. And as Mr. Swims and I went out and looked at this several times, we have that new hotel being constructed on that lot, which would be just west of the ditch. And I think there were some concerns of, of erosion in that corner, which this would stabilize that and stop it and really help the entire retail and commercial development downstream from continued flow, because that water's not going to go away, uh, levees or not. So I think this was just another measure to mitigate the flow and the speed of it, which will eventually stop and mitigate the erosion. If it's not done, it eventually give way. It's a good possibility, right? Do what now? If nothing's done, it can eventually give way, correct? Either way, it would well, it, it's, it's it is going to continue to be more and more of an erosion problem. I think if if it's not stabilized, and I, I think that uh, uh, that it could end up having some impacts on the um, actual um, elevation of the the finished elevation of the lake. Um, so if it eats around it, you're going you're gonna to see the lake get lower. So I think this will help establish the weir, which is basically establishes what the lake elevation would be. Um, so that will, that will help long term with maintenance. And that, we did get a permit through DEQ. They reviewed this. They looked at it, determined that, that this was a maintenance project. Um, and they gave us a permit for one year um, from April, from October 12th is when we actually got the permit issue. Do what? Just prevent possible flooding on the big road, swimming in the lower lake, and then just prevent possible flooding if it grows.
Um, well, we've done studies to see exactly what the impacts would be. All these lakes are tied together. You've got uh, three different lakes that are coming together. Um, what I've seen is that if we have a dam break, it, it does show an area that's inundated. Uh, we've done uh, improvements to the woodland lake channel outlet. I mean the wood, uh, the um, the woodland um, the woodland project included in uh, upping the uh, the width of that channel um, to the uh, probable maximum pre uh, precipitation, the BMP. And so that's going to help a lot, but we haven't got a study that shows exactly what the impacts would be, but yes, that could potentially have some issues downstream if there was a, uh, if there was some type of a breach in the weir. Mr. Swim does, does uh, hold back quite a bit of water. Mr. Swim, the automatic large Collins was asking maybe an explanation of what physically would be done here. Will this culvert come out? Will it be riprap? What, what will go yep. in place of this? Is that what you? Uh, well, I want, I'm getting up there. Are you replacing the whole concrete blockage of the lake? So, yes, sir, we are. You're going to take it out? Take so it you, out. You're going to have to lower the lake then, right? No, we're going to build, a, we're going to build some we're type build of a dam upstream, upstream of it to hold it back while that water's <laughs> in place. Project Somewhat like they did in Woodland, they built yeah. a temporary yeah. weir. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We're going to put, build an earthen probably dam in front of it. I believe that's probably what, what, what we're going to do upstream of it. If you, if you take the private lake out of this equation, Mr. Swims, what, what is for the general public or what type of safety or out here erosion, other property owners, what factors in beyond the private lake with this? What, what's the general public gaining or what are these other businesses gaining, if anything, by this being done? Well, the uh, Chicoka Lake ties in to Sylvan Lake. Sylvan Lake ties in to this and that all comes out at this location. So the study that we had done uh, that Neil Schaefer had completed some time back tied all these three uh, lakes together. Um, it was determined that, that we did a project on the, the Woodland Lake project was, was basically to replace that with a box culvert to widen the channel. So just upstream of this is the Sylvan Lake. If, if that structure that holds back the water uh, if it did fail, um, I guess it could have some impacts as it flows downstream. So you've got, you've got a, uh, a box culvert that's under um, Kemp Creek Boulevard that uh, could be um, overloaded, I guess, and it could actually cause some flooding in that area. So I think it's important that the weir structure actually stay in place and keep and maintain uh, that structure and that basically uh, mitigates or, or controls, I guess, that the, the rate at which the flow leaves Sylvan Lake. So it is an important, uh, an important weir to be in place for that system to operate. And essentially, Mayor, I might add that uh, <clears throat> Mike Phillips from uh, Neil Schaefer, who is their hydraulic engineer, we do have the study on file, which, as you, as you know, you've got, as Mr. Swims eloquently stated, Maywood Lake, Sylvan Lake, not Maywood, excuse me, Woodland Lake, Sylvan, and Shakoka. All three ultimately need work on it, but by doing this, as Mr. Swim says, it's going to mitigate flooding and property damage downstream because if those structures aren't there, you've got a free flow of water, uh, basically a big open ditch, and when you have flash floods and heavy rain events. So at some point, you'll have, according to Mr. Phillips, erosion, uh, flooding, and other property damage if we don't have some way to slow down the water flow through that channel basin. I'm wondering Let, let me mention one thing and um, Alderman Wallace, your motion to approve what's actually before the board is just a request for direction as to whether to move forward in obtaining two quotes. Mm -hmm. And so it, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but state it another way. Would it be accurate to say that your motion is to direct staff to obtain two quotes and to bring those back to the board?
second. Well, the mayor, let me ask if I'm reading this correctly from Mr. Swims, are we not also looking for those quotes, but at the same time, as the Senate says, the plans are complete with a recommendation to replace the weir. If we're under the $75,000 threshold and we get two quotes, I guess the board would have to authorize which quote to go with and That's then right. automatically proceed? Yeah, under our, under, I guess, combination of state law and local purchasing procedure, if you have uh, projects such as this that are between 25000 and 75000 the board is the one that approves those quotes. Okay, so then the next move, if the board would approve, would to accept one of those quotes and go on with the project that the board That's correct. Do so. Okay. That's correct. I'll second Mr. Wallace's uh, motion. So motion to get two bids from the staff, second from uh, Mr. Earhart, motion made by Mr. Wallace. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries for staff to obtain the two bids. Item number two, new business consideration of recommendation to authorize the city of Olive Branch to enter into supplemental agreement number one with HDR engineering for the project referred to as Pleasant Hill widening in the amount of $55,728.24, increasing the contract amount from $596,526.49 to $1,147,000. $254.72 and authorize the mayor to sign the agreement. This is a continuation of the uh, project on Pleasant Hill. So you'd be going north of Nail Road. Is that right? This is a MPO project that's being pushed further. Is that the goal, Mr. Swims? Yes, sir. This, um, this supplemental agreement has been, um, been being reviewed for several months now. So. Um, it basically is going to add in several different elements to this project um, north of Nail Road. Um, I put a map in here to help y'all understand, I guess, exactly what the project um, is, is going to have as far as design, as far as right-of-way, and as far as construction. But this particular supplemental agreement is, is fairly substantial, um, but it will extend the environmental study all the way to Goodman Road. Um, it, will moder it will pay for the installation of a signal at Nell Road and um, Pleasant Hill Road. It will modify the signal at Church Road. Um, it will design a box culvert over the Nolliho Creek, which is a major creek crossing on Pleasant Hill Road. But all of this, well, that work is, is north of actually where the construction limits would be. Um, and also as a part of this, we'll have right of way uh, determination fixed all the way to Goodman Road. The actual construction project itself will remain as is, which goes from Church Road up to Nail. Um, that will be the next phase that we move into, but the MPO has uh, actually just today authorized some additional funds that help pay for some of this design uh, that carries it all the way north. So it's, uh, it's, it's delayed, I guess, a little bit of how fast this project's moving along but it also gets us a little bit further down the road in the way they call it as phase one, which is where we're gonna get construction dollars for, which is from Church Road to Nail Road or just north of Nail Road. Um, and then we will get a, a, a substantial amount of design um, from, from Nail Road north to, uh, to Goodman Road as a part of this supplemental agreement. So I hope I haven't confused y'all too much, but um, I wanted to, give you this map and let y'all take a look at it. Um, hopefully you can understand a little bit about exactly what we're getting from the supplemental agreement, but uh, uh, the environmental uh, portion of this is what the biggest part of, of what, what has, I guess, pushed us all the way to Goodman Road with this study. <clears throat> but they will be actually identifying everything all the way up to Goodman Road, so that intersection at Goodman Road and Pleasant Hill will be looked at as well as a part of this 60% plan design. So um, I'll be glad to answer any questions y'all have on it, but the, um, uh, the request is for y'all to approve a supplemental agreement in the amount of $550,728.23 um, with HDR for them to uh, continue with the design of this project. And the thought is, Mr. Swims, that the entire amount the supplemental, just like the original, would be 80-20. That's what yes, sir. MPO would be 80%, so our, the city would be 20%. Our portion, and I put it in the memo, is 110,145.65. Okay. 
Any questions for the board? Alderman at Large Collins motion to approve as presented. Second. Second, Ms. Hamilton. In discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Mm -hmm. Motion carries. Yeah. Item three is consideration of recommendation to approve the final payment for precision communications in the amount of $76,081 and accept the project as complete for the project referred to as FEMA emergency notification devices. These are our our community warning devices, our, our new sirens, uh, 17, I believe, is that 17 of them have been installed and working properly, so it's just a matter of paying and closing the rest of that out. Is that correct? That's right. We, we All of them have been tested and they've been uh, approved, so we're recommending final payment to uh, Precision uh, Communications in $76,081. And that was uh, 80 as well, wasn't it? Um, I believe it was I'm, 80 or 85. I, I can't remember exactly okay. what the numbers are. I apologize. We're, we're, we're carrying the smaller portion as a city. I think it was either 80 or 85 percent by FEMA. Even if the audio does confuse us sometimes, the gentleman speaking on Saturday afternoon, people are still trying to figure out what he's saying, but he's basically saying this is a warning, this is a test, etc. But uh, it, it's working. They're all working. In, any questions or motions? Nothing to approve. Motion to approve by Alderman Dickerson. Is there a second? second. Alderman Henderson, second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Is there a motion to leave regular session with the intentions of going into executive session to discuss items one through five? Ms. Henderson, motion. Mr. Collins, second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? We're out of regular session. Is there a motion to go into executive session to discuss personnel matter in the airport department, personnel matters in the fire department, personnel matters in the police department, personnel matters in the street department, acquisition of property discussion with city attorney, and since the agenda was printed, uh, item six will not be discussed tonight. So is there a motion to go into executive session to discuss items one through five? So moved. Mr. Earhart, motion. Second. Second, Ms. Hamilton, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? We are in executive session. Mm -hmm.